Namaste yogis, welcome to your practice. This is Steven from YogaWorks and welcome to your Restore and Reset program. It's a little mini series of three classes that I put together for when you feel like you're a little bit depleted, there's too many challenges around you and you feel like you just need to withdraw within yourself and take a little moment to recharge, to reset and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So in this first session today, we're going to be melting the hips and then there's going to be two more sessions, one to relax your back and then one to move into deep stillness where we're going to be using the wall for pretty much all the poses in the whole uh, little sequence. So you're going to need a couple of props uh, for this session. Ideally, you would have a blanket, a block and a strap. But if you don't have one of those, well, probably you can make a plan. I'll, I'll offer some suggestions, but see if you can get something close. You can have a belt instead of a strap. You can have a, a fat book instead of the block. And you can have well, any kind of cover or even a yoga mat will probably work instead of the blanket. So for this first pose, we're going to be kneading the blanket. We'll come into a seated twist and you just want a little bit of padding under the hips. This might be a little bit too much. So I'll just have a single layer and we'll just use this to sit on. So sit on the edge of your blanket. Pull your right heel towards your left buttock and then place your left foot over the right knee. And then really loosely, we're going to wrap the right elbow over that knee without pulling really hard and place the left hand somewhere behind you. We're not trying to twist as deeply as possible, we're trying to hold it and sink into the pose. That's more the intention that we're going for. And here we are, we have arrived in our pose. And you'll notice in this practice, we're gonna be holding poses for maybe quite a bit longer than you are used to. So just take a moment, make any adjustments in the beginning to settle in. And then start to really ground the hips down. Feel the both sides of the hips, the right side and the left side, the sit bones on the blanket. And we're not going for our deepest twist at all. In fact, I'd recommend to only go to about 60, maybe 70% of your capacity. And we don't want any intensity in terms of the muscular stretch. We're working more on the softening, the relaxation of our nervous system. And secondly, you're also working on the connective tissue in the body that just takes a whole lot longer than the muscles to stretch and to open up. So think of the ligaments and all the the tissue that surrounds the muscle that gives shape to your body, gently lengthening and reshaping as we hold these poses for, it's gonna be about two, maybe two and a half minutes on each side. We've got about half a minute left. And see if you can just drop in let the breath gently move. There's no specific way you need to breathe, but let it be calming, relaxing breaths. And then really slowly, as slowly as you came in, come out. And then we'll swap the legs. So bring the left heel towards the right buttock. Just make sure your, your foot is not on the blanket or stuck under your sit bone. And then the right foot, place it over the left knee. Shuffle around, get comfortable, so you can ground down through both sides of the sit bones. And then again, the left elbow, just wrap it loosely in front of that right knee. Place the right hand behind you where it feels comfortable. And take a moment to just explore. When you just arrive in the pose, see what kind of sensations you can detect. 
might be a whole other experience than the first side. Our bodies are never exactly symmetrical. So you're likely to feel that one side is probably a bit more open than the other side. So just notice that. Relax where you can. It's, it's okay to turn the head back, but I actually prefer to keep a little bit more neutral and just sort of in line with the sternum, with the chest. Or you can even look forward if that, if that feels better in your body. And just enjoying the slower pace, the sense of arriving in a pose and for the next two, sometimes three minutes, we have nowhere to go, this is it. This is where we're staying for a good amount of time, which gives us the opportunity to explore a little bit deeper, to work with the breath and to start to feel the mind settling in the pose, in the body. So as the body opens up, you might feel you just get a bit more comfortable in the pose. You can deepen it, but I would say um, don't focus on that at all. I would rather focus on getting more settled and more relaxed just where you are which is a good skill to have. I've got about just less than half a minute left. Notice how the breath moves, where it feels a bit restricted as you're twisting and where there's still space for it to move through the lung capacity. And gently release that. Slowly turn back and then come into a cross-legged pose. Now I'm going to shift a little bit forward so I'm on the very edge of the blanket. Actually my sit bones on the mat and the, the blanket is just supporting the just behind the sit bones sort of to tilt your pelvis a little bit more forward. And you can sit however you want but I'm going to slide the heels quite close together with the knees a little bit wider and have that blanket just support behind the sit bones so I have a nice and upright posture and this might be it this might be plenty if you feel the outer hips already stretching and you can lengthen your spine and that's a good place to be and if you want a slightly more stretch if you have a little bit more space then you can walk your hands a little bit forward but again don't be in a hurry, don't lie all the way down, just stay a little bit upright and just explore the pose from here. Feel the grounding through the hips and through the legs. Feel a weighted quality of the pelvis and the bones in the legs resting down towards the mat. You don't have to do anything to achieve that. It is done for you by gravity. And then see how fully can you rest the whole lower body down. Just let go of any holding or tensing. And then from that base, just feel the spine, the upper body gently lengthen forwards and up. Now there's more space to breathe compared to our twist just before, so just enjoy that opportunity. Let the breath circulate with ease. And we are here to restore and to reset. So our goal is not to go further, it's not to get more flexible, it's not to lengthen the tissues, although some of these things might be a byproduct of this practice. Our goal is to walk away from this practice feeling recharged. We're filling up our cup, which sometimes feels a little bit empty. So before we are able to share 
energy and efforts with others. We need to attend to ourselves. We've got half a minute left here. If it's, if it's available, if it feels good, you can always lower your elbows down here as well. But don't feel like you need to get to somewhere with the arms and the legs. This is not the purpose of this class. And then slowly lift back up. And we'll just swap to the second side, nice and simple. So sit bones just on the mat and the back of the hips supported by that blanket. Open the knees wide and lengthen the spine. You might be upright here, this is fine. Or you might, if you lean a bit forward, you might feel a nicer stretch at the back of the hips. And just rest in this shape. Remember, the first part of the pose, we're just settling in. We're here for a good amount of time, so we can, we can take our time. We don't need to rush. And you'll feel there's some initial resistance sometimes when we get into a new shape. And as we stay longer, the body understands that it is okay to relax, to let go. We can never let go of everything all at once. We might have to do these poses regularly. But at least some of the tension that we hold mentally and physically, emotionally, can hopefully loosen up a little bit, maybe dissipate through this practice. How deeply can you rest in each of these poses? And how quickly can you get into that deep state of stillness after we switch into a new shape? We've got about a minute left. If you want to lower your elbows for the last part, that's fine. But don't feel like this is a requirement. You might be better off on the hands or even more upright, that's fine. Softening the legs, softening the spine, relaxing the shoulders and the neck. Feel free to close your eyes and just drop in to this this little moment here. And then slowly use your hands to come back up. Take your time, really gently come out. You can always help with the hands, sometimes the legs or the hips feel a bit tight after staying in one pose for a long time. And now we can remove the blanket and grab the strap instead. So grab your strap and lie down on your back. And then start to pull, before you use the strap, just pull your right knee into the chest and just rest back. And often we, there's instructions to keep the feet active and all of that is fine. But for today, let your feet and that, that bottom leg just relax however it wants to. And ever so slightly pull the right knee into your chest. That's it. Couple of breaths here, feel the shoulders melt down. Feel the head rest back. 
and then grab the strap place it around the top foot your right foot to start with and what I like to do is just wrap with my hands once around the strap so I don't have to do a lot of effort to keep the strap in the hands and to lengthen that leg up feel free to lengthen the strap so you'll reduce the angle of the leg that's fine and even feel free to bend that right knee a little bit it's okay and then you want to do just enough effort to keep that leg up and to hold the strap but nothing more so can you find that sweet spot where you're just resting in this pose the leg hanging in the strap your arms hanging from the leg shoulders softening down face relaxed Take a moment to enjoy the sensations of just being here for a longer time. Not needing to go further, not needing to stretch more, just deepening the stillness inside you. How deeply can you relax in each of these shapes? And then slowly just rebend that right knee to remove the strap. Just place it off to the side for a moment, stretch the right leg out and then swap second leg the left leg pull it in with the hands but relax your left foot relax the right leg and the foot and just rest here as you gently compress the front of the left hip And then we'll use the strap again to go over the, the ball of that left foot. Start to extend it up and do what you need to to find a comfortable position for the hands or the arms. I like to measure it so my arms are straight when I'm holding the strap. We just see what works for you. Relax the bottom leg and again do just enough effort to hold the pose to keep that leg up in the strap but nothing more so you might be able to to release the front of that right hip to soften the belly to relax the shoulders to smoothen out the forehead and the face And again, drop in to that place of stillness. It tends to be a bit hidden under layers of busyness and rush and pressure and thinking. But if we allow it, if we make the space, we can find it back. It is always there. Let your arms just hang from the strap. Let your leg hang in the strap. And just enjoy this feeling of not having to rush to the next activity like we usually do. A gentle invitation to your body to open up and an invitation to your mind to relax. And 
and then slowly re-bend that left knee. You can place the strap off to the side and we'll use the block for the next pose. So lie as if you're going into bridge pose and I'm just lifting the hips high enough to slide the block under my sacrum on the medium height. If that's too much, you could go the lower height, but I would definitely not go to the, the highest one. You'll see why in a moment. And then just bring, bend the right knee, bring it into the chest, a little bit like we've done before, but now the hips are elevated on that block. And just see how that feels here. Again, relax the feet, relax the weight of your hips and pelvis on the block. And then if it feels good, you can stretch the left leg a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be all the way straight. Relax that heel down on the mat and let the foot flop out. No, we don't need to pull and push. And this is it, we have arrived in our pose. We are here for another almost two minutes. And ask yourself not how much can you stretch, how deep can you go, but how much can you soften and relax. It's a different quality. And sometimes it might take a while to settle into these poses, into this practice. But once you give it a chance, once you get out of your way, it really feels like you are recharging your body and mind from a giant battery, an unlimited source of energy that exists. The yogis say, deep inside each of us, in the lower belly. Enjoy these moments of quiet and rest. And if your mind gets a little bit impatient, then just notice that too. We don't need to wish anything away. We're working with whatever is available right here. And it's slowly take your time to release the right foot back down, rebend that left knee as well and just feel the difference between the left and the right side. You might feel the blood rushing back into the front of that right hip after compressing it for a moment. And then start to bring the left knee in. Just hook your hands around the knee and ever so slightly pull in, but it's more like a hanging and resting. It's not uh, actively pulling it. You just feel that start of the pose. Pelvis heavy, legs relaxed, shoulders resting down. And start to straighten the right leg a little bit more. Doesn't have to go all the way straight. So you'll probably be on that heel of the right foot and let the right foot, no need to flex it really hard, just let it flop out to the side and do the same with the left foot, just let it hang from that ankle from the lower leg. And here we are. What a luxury to take 
this time to take care of ourselves, to focus on our well-being, on our health, on calming our nervous system. This might be the most important thing you do today. About a minute left. See how much can you drop in. And if you're like me, you really feel that your body and your mental space are just lapping up this moment of quiet, a chance to let off all that pressure we've been carrying around, sometimes for many years, not just days. And then slowly release the left foot back down, pull the right foot in as well. Again, feel the blood rushing back into the left hip this time, into the front of the left hip. And then just lift your hips enough to slide the block out from underneath you. And then place the right ankle on the left knee. And all we're going to do is, is move the whole setup to the left side. And what I like to do here is with the left hand, you'll see it better on the second side, but I'll just explain it. With the left hand, just pin that right foot down so it doesn't slide away. And with the other hand, you don't need to do anything. You can just rest it where it's comfortable. Another option for some of you might be preferable is with the left hand just to slightly prop up the inside of that right thigh. But I prefer to pin the foot down, it just allows me to relax fully into the shape, into the pose, and hold it without any extra effort. So relax the hips, let that right hip. Just gently pull away from the, the point where you're holding that foot down. And as before, feel that the pose is just that, it's just a pose, a shape that your body can do. But within the shape, the breath can move and the mind can relax. About half a minute left. And even though we start with the outer body, the physical layer, the yogis say there are four more deeper layers that we can work on, that we work on in every practice, even if we're not aware of them. So can you start to sense these deeper layers, the mind, breath, the intellect, your inner wisdom you could take, 
and the joy body, the place in you that is always free and open. And then really slowly lift everything back up and place the right foot down next to the left. Take a little moment to feel both sides. This spot that we worked on just now, the outer hip on the right. And then place your left ankle on the right knee. Without moving anything else, just let everything come down to the right side. And then two options as before, with the right hand you can just support the left inner thigh. Option one. Or option two, that's the one I prefer, is to pin the left foot down with the right hand. And to just rest everything down from there. Remember the name of this class is melting the hips. So can you get that feeling of the hips just softening down, just releasing. And especially if you spend a lot of time sitting or sometimes doing active sports and activities you feel there is a lot of tension to release around the hips. You might have to come back to this practice often just to get into deeper layers of relaxation. Can you feel with every exhale, there's a bit more surrendering, a bit more allowing that is possible. You might even find spots where you're holding tension that you didn't know about before paying attention to it. And then really slowly, without disturbing your feet, you can release. You can extend the legs long if you have a little bit more time for Shavasana. Take a couple of minutes, maybe five or ten minutes is not a crazy luxury after this practice. So I hope your hips, the inner thighs, the outer hips, going to the lower back are feeling nice and melted after this practice. And I hope to see you again here soon. Namaste.